Hey, today we're going to start a new uh, message series uh, called Heaven 101. I hope that you're interested in heaven. If you're not, you should be. Uh, it should be where you desire to go. In fact, you should already know that you're going there. Uh, we're going to try to deal with some of the more common basic questions that people uh, often ask about heaven, things that they wonder about and, and maybe haven't had a chance to ask. Uh, on the outline in the bulletin, I put what I'm going to cover. Uh, however, I make an offer to you if I'm not covering the question or the issue about heaven that you would like. Uh, my email is at the bottom of the outline. You can email me. Send your question to me, and uh, I'll do my best to get your question into the series uh, as we go along. Uh, now, we're not going to get too far with it today because we have uh, the distinct privilege of having the Lord's Supper here today, and uh, that's important, and I don't want to shortchange that. And we won't, get, uh, we won't get too far next week. We're a little limited next week with our annual tribute to veterans, but that's important, and so we'll take time for that. But we'll go with Heaven 101 for about four weeks, and then uh, we, will, we will stop and focus on Christmas. Doesn't that seem weird to say right now? It's Christmas. In four weeks, we're going to start talking about Christmas here at church. And uh, then after, after December, we'll come back to Heaven 101 in January, and we'll just keep going with it. Now, every Sunday, to get you kind of warmed up to the topic of Heaven and thinking about that, uh, we're going to play a, a game I'm calling uh, Heaven 101 Trivia. And uh, each service, there's always an eager volunteer who wants to come up here and, and uh, play the game with me. And uh, you could win a fabulous prize. Uh, Shane Smith, thank you for volunteering. Uh, man, I really appreciate it. He was sitting over there mouthing, please pick me, pick me. Come on up, Shane. Thank you. Come on up. Try, try to curb your enthusiasm just a little bit, all right? We don't want people to get too... So, well, I just remember when you were a little baby warrant officer and came to Chapel of Wings with me out there. And so, so here, you get your own microphone. doesn't do any good if you hold it down here. you got to hold it up there so you speak, okay, when you speak. And uh, let, me go, let me cover the rules, okay? The rules are no help from the audience, first of all. So you can't ask for help. And if you know any of the answers, zip it, okay? You can't, you can't help him, all right? Uh, Shane, where'd you go? Okay? Okay, stay in my vision, all right? Stay right here by me, all right? You, you're going to get uh, three multiple choice questions. To win, you must answer two out of three correctly, okay? And uh, last but not least, you can't take all day to answer. I mean, we have limited time here, okay? So... Uh, once I show you the question, you just got to make your best stab at it. Can okay? it be like the Price is Right? They're multiple choice. No. Close isn't good enough. Okay? So, question number one, Heaven 101 Trivia. What is it? Which of these is an act? Turn around and look where I'm looking. Okay? Man. Which is an actual title of a song? Holes in the Floor of Heaven. Or can I stop in Texas on my way to heaven? Or both of those or none of the above? I'd say C. You'd say C. Yes. And you would be wrong. <laughs> Holes in the Floor of Heaven is an actual song. One uh, 1998 Country Music Association single and song of the year. But I've decided, isn't that a cool name for a country song? Can I stop in Texas on my way? I just made that up this week. <laughs> But I think I'm going to write a song. <laughs> and it's going to be called, Can I Stop in Texas on My Way to Heaven? All right? So you're 0 for 1. You've got to get the last two correct to win. What, uh, which of these is the actual title of a movie? Taco Heaven, Tortilla Heaven, both or none of the above? What would you say? There's no E. A, B, C, and D. What would, put the mic up here. B. B, and you would be correct. There is a movie that came out in 2008 called Tortilla Heaven, and it's starring no one you would know, okay? For obvious reasons, all right? And last but not least, which is the actual title of a book? Can a Democrat get into heaven? It's election day on Tuesday, by the way. 
Heaven is not for Republicans, both or none of the above. Don't look. Which is it? Both. Both. And you would be wrong. Can a Democrat get into heaven is the real book. All right? I'm not being political. That's just the name of a book. All right? And just in case some of you think I'm lying, that's the actual ISBN number of that book. All right? So, Shane, you only got one out of three. The fabulous prize I have here is, uh, is a uh, gift card from Cheeburger Cheeburger. And because you didn't win, you have to take this to some child in the audience and let them go on your dime to Cheeburger. Right now? Right now. Can I pick Chad? No. <laughs> Chad is only, he only acts like a child. All right, so find, find some child and give it to him. All right, we've got a taker over there. Thank you for playing. Just think next week, it could be you, all right? So, hey, you know, when I prepared for this, I, I was amazed to discover there are literally hundreds and hundreds of books and movies and songs and TV shows with the word heaven in the title. And so I, I, I did a little digging around and thinking about it. Why, why is that? And I really believe it's because People are thinking more about life after death and eternity and heaven or hell than we realize. I mean, we don't go walking around to somebody up, you know, out on the street and say, hey, I've been thinking about life after death today. Or, hey, I was, I was thinking about eternity today. But, you know, we as human beings, I think it's on our mind a lot. And yet, what a lot of people don't do is they don't consult the only truth that there is about heaven. Instead, they'll run out and, and, and have their horoscope or their palm read or read their horoscope or, you know, see what the latest junk is that Oprah's saying about heaven or, you know, Lord knows what people consult. But there's so much misinformation about heaven and so much misunderstanding about heaven that people are obviously not going to the source of truth. And people, are, are, people wind up believing things about heaven that are not true. And they end up not believing the things about heaven that are true. And my purpose in this series, I mean, is to, if you've got any questions about heaven, if there's just any misunderstandings, I hope we can clear them up. Now, you probably notice on the outline, this is not the typical sermon where I tell you to go to one passage of Scripture and, and, and then follow along as I read it. Because, you know, the word heaven is used in the Bible scattered out over 500 times. And it is alluded to and indirectly referred to uh, hundreds of more times. So there's not one place to go to. So we've got to skip around. Which means I've got all the verses I'm going to use looked up. And you're either going to have to look them up in advance or you're going to have to take that outline home and look them up later and study. To me, the place to start, if you're going to talk about heaven, almost seems like a, a question that, you know, everybody should know the answer to it. To me, it's the most important question about heaven. But believe it or not, it's perhaps the most misunderstood question about heaven. People need to know who goes to heaven. See, because when you define who goes to heaven, you're also defining how they get there. On what basis do they get to heaven? And, and it's not as simple a question as you might think. Uh, the answer obviously is believers go to heaven. But they're, they're, they're believers from the Old Testament and they're believers from the New Testament time. So they're believers that are old and new. Old Testament age believers. We'll talk about how in the world they could get to heaven uh, based on Jesus Christ when he hadn't even come yet. But for, for, for us in this room, for every person alive today, for every person who has lived since the time that Jesus was crucified and rose from the dead, the, the way to heaven is clear. You must truly believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins. You must truly believe that he rose from the dead with the power to forgive you. And you must ask him for it. 
That's how your name gets written in the book of life in heaven, never to be erased, and your place in heaven reserved forever, is you have to believe it and ask him for it. Now that is so simple and so clear. And the Bible makes it clear. Why don't more people know the answer then? You know, the Bible says in some verses that you probably already know. For example, in John 14, uh, 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 Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, I mean, Jesus was talking about going to heaven and I'm going to come back and get you and you know the way to get there. And Thomas said, Lord, we don't know the way. And what was Jesus' famous answer in John 14, 6? I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. Does it sound like there are any loopholes in that to you? No one goes to heaven, gets to the Father, except through Jesus. Acts 4.12, another famous verse, says, Salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. No other name. Is there a loophole in that? No. Who goes to heaven? People who trust Jesus. Romans 10, 9, another famous verse. It says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That means you will go to heaven. So you've got to believe that he died and rose again and you've got to confess it with your mouth. You've got to ask him for it. I know some of you are sitting there saying, well, you know, I mean, this, everybody knows the answer. I mean, this is, this is too simple, too basic. Well, I'm glad you know it, but did you realize there's a big difference between knowing it and believing it to trust Jesus? There are a lot of people who know about Jesus, but they've never trusted Jesus. There are people in this room who have never trusted Jesus. Right now. There are people in this room who came here thinking that there are many ways to heaven. And they're not sure if they're believing me right now or not. Because I'm telling them that it's exclusive. It's only through Jesus. There are people in this room who've heard about Jesus before, but they, they have chosen to reject him. So you see, it's not just do you know it, but have you trusted him for it? And I want these, the doubters in the room, I want the ones who, who've never made a commitment to Christ, I would love to see them in heaven. And so I'll tell you what, the question of who goes to heaven is going to be asked and answered over and over and over again. If you, if you think it is, it is too simple, let, let, let me give you some information that, that may kind of shock you. I hope it does shock you. I did some research this week and I found... Uh, uh, by a reputable uh, research firm in America, not, not a fly-by-night company. This, this company's been around a long time. And they do research into uh, religious issues. They did several surveys from 2005 to 2011. Numerous surveys. Every one of them was random. People were randomly selected from across the states. And in every survey, uh, it was at least 1,000 people involved. So this, this covers several thousand people over about a a six-year period in America. They, they read several statements to them and they simply asked them to agree or disagree with the statement. I want you to listen to some, some of this. Statement number one, it doesn't matter what religious faith you follow because they all teach the same lessons. Do you know how many Americans surveyed agreed with that? 43% agreed with a statement that says doesn't matter what you believe, you can go to heaven anyway. Statement number two, all people will experience the same outcome after death regardless of their religious beliefs. 40% of people surveyed agreed with that. Doesn't matter, we're all going to the same place no matter what we believe. Don't tell me that everybody knows the answer to who goes to heaven because they don't. Statement number three, all people are eventually saved no matter what they do. Doesn't matter what you do, doesn't matter what you believe, everybody's going to heaven. 40% of people agree with that. 
Statement number four, if a person is good enough or does enough good things for other people, they will earn a place in heaven. In other words, you don't have to have faith. You don't have to trust anybody. You just, on the day you're judged, if your good deeds outweigh the bad, you're in. 48% of people surveyed believe you can work your way to heaven. Don't tell me everybody knows the answer of who goes to heaven. Statement number, number five. Christians and Muslims worship the same God even though they have different names and different beliefs regarding God. Now hold on to your seat for this one. You know how many people surveyed agreed with that? 59%. Almost 6 out of 10 people surveyed said that that doesn't matter if you believe in Jesus or Allah or it doesn't matter, we're all going the same place. Now, in case you think that they surveyed a bunch of liberal people, let, let me tell you something that was shocking to me. Of all the people in Texas who were surveyed and asked about this, about Christians and Muslims, 62% of people in Texas said that Christians and Muslims worship the same God, compared to 48% in California. Now, let me... Let me bring it just a little bit closer to home. Those were random surveys that did not ask, are you a Christian, are you Jewish, are you Muslim, are you an atheist? They just random surveys of people. But then they took the same questions and they found people who claimed openly to be born-again believers in Jesus Christ and asked them the same questions. Now this should shock you more than red. I don't expect the world to know the answer. But I expect people who claim to be born again by the blood of Jesus to know the answer to who goes to heaven. And 25% of people who claim to be a Christian agreed that all people are eventually saved and accepted by God no matter what faith or religion they follow. 25%. And 40% of people who are born again Christians say that Christians and Muslims worship the same God. Shocking to me. But now let's get a little bit more close than that. Let's, let's, let's bring it right here into this room, right here and right now. If that research is true, what does it mean in this room right here, right now? Statistically, it means that in this room right now, somewhere between 50 and 150 people do not know the answer to the question, who goes to heaven? It probably means there are people in this room right now who believe that if their good deeds outweigh their bad deeds, they'll make it into heaven. It means there are probably people in this room right now who think that there are many ways to get to heaven, many religions, many paths. doesn't matter which one you choose. Jesus is just one of them. But folks, can I plead with you to hear the word of God? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. And you're not going to get to the Father except through Him. Salvation is found in no one else. There is no other name given to men under heaven by which we must be saved. If you want to go to heaven, there's only one way you're going to get there. Now you can believe anything you want to, but, but don't insult the Bible by trying to make it say that there are many ways to get there. Believe what you want to, but don't involve the Bible if you're not going to trust Jesus. Because you cannot, through any kind of verbal or, or linguistic gymnastics, make the scripture say that there are many ways. No one will be in heaven just because they were a good person if they reject Jesus Christ. No one will be in heaven just because they were religious. There won't be a single person in heaven just because they went to church. There won't be anyone in heaven just because they were baptized. 
or just because they took the Lord's Supper or communion or because their parents had them baptized or when they were an infant and then they were confirmed and confessed their sins later to some priest. Apart from Jesus Christ, there won't be anybody there who doesn't trust Him. Not one person alive on this earth today who has heard about Jesus and rejects Him will be in heaven. You have heard about Jesus here today. Will you be in heaven? If you trust Jesus, you will. If you don't, you won't. What about those Old, Old Testament people? I'm talking a lot about Jesus. What chance do they have living hundreds if not thousands of years before Jesus ever came to die and before he ever rose from the dead? They couldn't believe in a crucified, resurrection, resurrected Jesus because it hadn't happened yet. Well, how do they get to heaven? Well, the Bible says by faith. But faith based upon whatever God chose to reveal to them. And were they faithful, whether it was a little or much, were they faithful to it? For example, the Bible says, Abraham, by faith, when God told him to leave his homeland and go to a land that he'd never been to before, by faith he did it. And the Bible says God gave him credit for it. The Bible says, by faith, when God told Noah to build an ark, even though it had never rained before on earth, and he didn't know what rain or a flood was, the Bible says, by faith, he built the ark. And God gave him credit for it. We're saved by faith in Jesus. They were saved by faith in obedience to whatever God told them, whether it was great or small. In the New Testament, in the book of Hebrews, you need to read chapter 11 sometime. It's often called the faith chapter. And it talks about people like Moses and Noah and, and uh, Joseph and, and Enoch and Abel and, uh, and a whole bunch of people who are named and unnamed. And what it says about them is this. It talks about their faith, and it talks about them going to heaven. It says all these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. In other words, those Old Testament people, they, they didn't have the privilege of clearly hearing and knowing about a crucified and risen Savior. But they knew God had something better coming. And they believed it in advance. And they believed it from a distance. And it says, they were longing for a better country. A heavenly one. And therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a city for them. What is that saying? God prepared their place in heaven. Because they acted by faith on whatever it was. He told them. Think about it for a minute. I, now, I, I think when we get to heaven, you know, all those Old Testament saints are going to be there. I think we're going to be so taken with Jesus that we're not going to pay much attention to him. But let's just pretend on this side of heaven, how cool is it going to be to walk into heaven and say, Hi, Daniel, my name is Donnie. What was it like when you got thrown into the lion's den? Tell me about those lions. Did they lick you? You know, what was it really like? Hey, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, my name is Donnie. What, did, did it burn just a little bit to get thrown in the fiery furnace? And oh, by the way, who was it in there with you? The Bible says there was somebody else in there with you. Who, who came? Hey, hey, Joseph, what was it like when your brothers put you in a hole and sold you into slavery? Hey, David, my name's Donnie. What was it like when you walked out there and you saw that giant? Will you be in heaven to meet the Old Testament saints? I hope so. I pray that you will.